Welcome in. This is Winning Cures Everything. This is the NFL recap for week number eight, your Halloween special edition. I am too cool for schooling it with the cowboy hat alone. Gary went uh, the other route. Yeah, it was not a. It's not one of my finer moments. I am smarter than this. I I know, but uh, but this was one of those where you think, all right, well, I'll just grab some face paint from Walmart because uh, we're going to dress up for the show. And yeah, apparently, face paint from Walmart takes a lot longer than like ten minutes to put on. And so when you're running from work to the house to help with the uh, the six month old, and then you got to put on some face paint before you come and do the show. Did not work out real well this go around. I will not be doing this next year. I guarantee wow. you that. Wow. Well, let's <laughs> listen. Nothing on your face could be more scary than where we're going to start out for our recap. We got to start in Cleveland. Well, hold on. Before we do that, TunicaTravel.com, oh, Tunica, see. Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six amazing, wonderful, fantastic sports books down there. TunicaTravel.com has all the information you need on it. Go visit them. Go visit winningcureseverything.com. Let's start in Cleveland. This is take two, by the way, and I did the read (laughs) very well the first time. Yeah, yeah. No, he he definitely did. (laughs) Y'all don't know that, though. All right. (laughs) We're going to start in Cleveland, the dumpster fire that is the Browns, that continues to burn and stink up the place. My, my, My Monday morning I woke to find just pure joy. The Red Sox won the World Series. I get to, you know, work, get to rolling, get the news. Huey has been fired. And everything is just going my way. And then Todd Haley's fired. And I'm like, okay, I, I kind of wanted him to be. I've never seen emotions change. I, as I, wanted, I wanted him to be the interim guy. Not that I think he's a great leader of men or an unbelievable coach. I think he's an adult in the room that knows how to do the job to just get us to the end of the season and maybe not get anybody hurt. And somebody I kind of wanted them to fire in this just let's let everybody go right now was Greg Williams. I I, I think Greg Williams is an insane person. And (laughs) normally, now I'm not a doctor. I'm I'm not, I'm not qualified (laughs) to, 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 to claim him insane, you know, but I just, I don't, I don't normally worry about my defensive coordinator being a crazy person. I, I actually kind of like that, it. Right? I don't. Yeah. I, it doesn't bother me. I don't know that I'm looking for it, but it doesn't scare me. Head coach, yeah, yeah. I'm not really interested in my my head coach being an insane person. My greatest fear with Greg Williams running this team is he's going to do something insane to try to grasp at whatever straw he can in hopes that he can get this job parlay it into another job or do something of that nature and and it just scares me i think we have so much young raw talent on this team i think he's gonna get somebody hurt is that an irrational fear of mine do you think that i'm i'm being a little too knee-jerk reactiony maybe slightly but like i can understand because it is an emotional topic for you um i I don't think he's going to go out and get somebody hurt by by making them do something crazy. The offensive coordinator now is Freddie Kitchens, who former Alabama quarterback who has worked for a ton of different teams. He's been all over the place. Correct. Never been an offensive coordinator before. No. Never called plays. That is what I would be worried about. Well, I mean, but like, I think I think whoever it is, if if Greg is really going to treat this like he's the head coach, he's going to have say in what type of play calls they run. The worst offense on one of the worst offensive lines in football, maybe the worst. Uh, they they're not going to be able to run the ball very well. I could see him trying to throw it. If we throw it forty times, Baker's not making it through the season. That's a problem. I would actually like if we came out on Sunday and said, hey, we're making a lot of changes. We're going to put Tyrod back in the starting lineup. I'm I'm okay with that. A bad offensive line. I want a mobile quarterback. He's on a one-year deal with us. We don't really care if anything happens to him. Not that we're trying to get him hurt. But you don't want the keys to the franchise. You, you don't hand a 16-year-old you know, a bush light and the keys to a Ferrari. And that's what it would be handing Baker to, to, to Greg Williams. 
I will tell you this. I think that Baker was the reason for the firings. Oh no! The, yeah. So they, so the they the didn't idea want of those not, two guys grooming him because they finally realized, oh, they're going to do more harm than good. Yeah, and and I, I think that okay that's part that. of the problem is like they're not going to give Tyrod or Tyrod this job back because they want Baker to play and continue to develop. But he, if you think Kitchens can develop him, no. But then, it, I don't think then, he does anything by sitting him on the bench. Oh, I would. Other I than would, maybe killing his confidence. I would. I don't even know if it would kill him the confidence. If I was John Dorsey, I would pull him aside and I would have a very honest conversation with him about the future of this franchise and just say, hey, man, I can't let you get hurt. And yeah. we are not ready to play you right now. And this coaching staff is not prepared to put you in a good situation to win. This has nothing to do with you. This is it's not you, it's me. That This is a an honest conversation that needs to happen with him, and he can be an adult about it or not. Now, while we're on Cleveland, and we don't have a whole lot in the NFL to get to, let's kick around some of the, What do you think of some of the coaches' names that have been offered up to possibly take this job? It's, it's the one note that I wrote down. Sean McVay was the Vegas favorite to coach the Browns. What Nothing. is the... Made me happier than seeing that. What? Explain how or or why or just I, d- I don't know why Vegas would make him the the favorite unless they knew something we don't know. Um, I, they tend to know. I, I will but... tell you this: if I was the Haslam's and I had the Haslam's money, I had multiple billions of dollars in cash. Okay, not a billion, but enough billions to where I could piss one away and I'm still multiple billionaire. I would trade whatever it took to trade to get him from the Rams. And after I traded him that he's barely 30 years old, I would make the John Gruden contract look like chump chains that you find in a couch. I'm talking 30 years, 30 mil a year. You can have it. It is yours. Here is the key to my franchise. Here is ownership stake in the Cleveland Browns. Because I I honestly believe he's that good. Now, he's been coached for one and a half years. Yeah, I was about to say let's, that is let's a, go a little... real short sample size, but I'm I'm not kidding. I think he's special, and it's not like a quarterback whose arm can just give out or an offensive line that might get hurt. Like he would have to have like a stroke and lose like half his brain capability for him to lose his brain. And even then, he might still be a better coach than Hugh Jackson. Hugh. Oh no, <laughs> no, there's no question he could lose half uh, his sense. But tell me, let's let's try and get realistic. Okay, is Lincoln Riley realistic? I, I think he's realistic if he wants to coach in the NFL. And he's only 35 years old. Right I think now, if so I he don't wants know. the job, I think he would be on my list to coach. Now, if it was me, now I don't know that that's what John Dorsey's going to do. He would be the second person I would call. The first, the first person I I would call would be the Rams to say, how many first round picks would it take to get Sean McVay? Like, what if we just give you every first round pick we've got for like the next five years? Yeah, I mean, what what name a number and we'll just buy him from you. You're that's trying to crazy. build that big stadium. Come on. You need some cash. We got cash. But, no, the, to be honest, to be real, the, the first person on my list would be Lincoln. And, and normally I wasn't a fan of college coaches going to the pros. But that's all changed. The offenses have all changed. 30 of the 32 teams this year have been reported to have called Lincoln Riley from an organizational standpoint, whether it be the coordinator, the head coach, or the GM, to ask him about consulting with game planning. In the yeah. off season, that tells me why 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 let the other teams use him as a consultant? Make him your guy. Yeah, we see he can do it. I do agree with that. I have no idea currently, like who would be a fit other than you know those two. Like obviously, you've got Baker Mayfield. If you think that he is you know as talented as a first round pick should be, uh then, yeah, you make the hire based on what direction you want that offense to go in. But, you, I mean, it's got to be – I mean, you just got to find the right fit because they haven't had the right fit there 
in forever. One thing I don't want them to do if they're going to go to college is to get a coach that's been a good head coach. It's like a CEO kind of guy that that just runs the program. Urban Meyer. And is not the genius. Because one Urban guy, Meyer was no, the genius. No, and I'm not worried about Urban. And Urban ain't taken. Urban's Urban's done. Um, it's it's the name that got kicked around from college was uh, Dabo, and 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 I don't know. I think Dabo is a really good coach. He ain't the genius. Though. But Dabo is not the guy that is devising these schemes. He's hiring offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators, and he's great at what he does. But but you just you need whoever the head coach is going to be to either be the genius or to be a bona fide NFL football man. Or, or well, let's look at it this way. Pete Carroll at USC, yeah. he was always the player's coach, never the genius. But, he, but, like, but he's an NFL football man. There's a difference. Dabo yeah. is not. He's never shown that to be. So that's a Cleveland situation. That's, I, we just went through 10 minutes. We got I'm late. very glad. <laughs> uh, well, well, some of that was the intro and yeah, you know, no, explain you're right. why your yeah. face looked like that. And, <laughs> anyway, moving on. We might number have to do two. that weekly. Number two. <laughs> no, that's usually my face. Number number two. This was going to be my top story in football, and we're going to Tampa Bay for this. Now I've said it before the season started. I don't think Jameis Winston deserves to be on an NFL roster. On a roster, I've made that clear. I have an amazing stat for you. I stole from Kevin Clark from the Ringer. Okay, this is this is all credit is this the, to him. The turnover. This is this well. So over the past five games, Jameis has thrown 13 interceptions in the fast five games that he has played, going back to last year because he hadn't played five games this year. That is tied for most ever in the NFL over a five-game stretch. Do you know who he's tied with? Ryan, I have no idea. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Get out of here. How insane is that, right? <laughs> How insane is that? That is that is a the fact that you can throw th- thirteen interceptions. That's Nate Peterman level. Well, bad. that's what I was going to say. Is like Peterman. I don't Most think he's pe- played well, in he five played, games. He hadn't started five games. Most quarterbacks don't get the opportunity to throw thirteen ints in five games. These two guys do. Patrick does. Fitzpatrick does because just because Winston is the quarterback that he backs up. And he is just going to do stuff to cause him to lose time all the time. Yeah. Whether it's suspension or he just plays so bad, the team loses all hope and faith in him. Here's the difference in those five games: Fitzpatrick wins almost all of them. Jameis has lost them all. Fitzpatrick yeah. is explosive enough. It's so weird to say he's like thirty something years old and has no athletic ability whatsoever, but he's explosive enough in the plays that he makes that he can overcome 13 INTs in five games to where he's got a winning record in all those games. He hasn't won them all, but he's won more than he's lost. He's 2-3. Yeah. yeah. Winston, 0 for 5. That is insane. Same number of INTs. Why is this man on a roster? I need somebody who knows the game of football and is inside the NFL to explain this to me because I don't know the answer to it. I can't. I can't answer that question. Like I, he's on a roster because he was the number one pick. I, that, that, that's, not that, that long. That ago. is irrelevant to me. I understand, though. but that, well, there as was, soon as the the best advice I was ever given, not to cut you off, the best advice I've ever been given in life is: as soon as you know you have a losing hand, you fold it. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing in life. If it's in a relationship, marriage, in a job, as soon as you know something is a loser, you get out and you walk away. Yeah. I mean, but at, at one point, Jamarcus Russell was also number one, and he and, stuck around for a couple of years. And, and But, yeah, I, he didn't stick around as long as Jameis, and he damn sure wasn't a starter as long as Jameis. No, but now keep him, but here's the and deal. And that was also – Oakland okay. did not completely build their franchise in their front office around Jamarcus Russell. Like, do you think Tampa has? Yes, that's why Dirk Cutter was hired. But that offense is pretty good. I think if you put a capable, competent quarterback, I think they're a quarterback away from being a, a decent team. I mean, yeah. maybe a playoff no, team. They, they are, and that's the deal. Like, they're a quarterback away. They they put all of these pieces around Jameis thinking that. Well, okay, he's not. So just bounce him and go get the quarterback. Just go find I, somebody else. I'm with you. I'm with you. Trade right, for now, Teddy Bridgewater. Like, go look. There are quarterbacks out there that are not doing anything. The, the Saints wouldn't make that deal. 
Well, I know that because it's yeah. in the division. In the division, but yeah. hell, he was available before the Saints got him. Like, go get somebody. He was available, and you didn't make the call. You knew this guy was who he was when. I think they're going to keep him as a happened. backup this year. They are going to cut him after the season. Actually, they'll. What would be the reason for waiting? What are we waiting on? I just we'll I, don't fire, know, I don't know. We'll fire coaches in the middle of the season. Why won't you cut somebody in the middle of the season? Cut their ass. He I doesn't mean, do you, deserve do you, it. Do you bring him off the bench? I mean, you got to make sure he doesn't get hurt because otherwise you owe him like what twenty million dollars next it. season. That's, but if you cut him, you just cut him. You know, he can't get hurt on the sidelines. He can't get hurt at his house. You don't owe him nothing for that. If he gets hurt in practice being a backup, you owe him. Man. But if you hand him walking papers tomorrow, you're done. He's gone. Huh. That's my number two story. Two or three right there. Number three, we're going to stick in the same game. The Bengals' offense has become amazingly explosive. And, and I know Tampa Bay doesn't have much of a defense. A.J. Green is really good. We know that he's really good. He is an elite receiver. Has been for years. Man, the combination of the two young bloods of Boyd and Nixon, Mixon, that offense has gone to a different level. I do think that they can compete with the Steelers and the Patriots in the AFC offensively. I don't think they're coached nearly as well as either one of those teams, which is not that I think the Steelers are coached very well. And and I don't think that they play defense, even though they have more defensive talent than the Patriots do from top to bottom. That could probably all point towards coaching. Uh, but, man, offensively, this team has gotten young. Andy Dalton looks a pretty amazing when he hasn't in the past. Has he just been missing somebody to take some pressure off of A.J. Green? Yeah. I think so. I, I think I, mean, I, I, feel I think like Boyd has is. looked incredible this season. They that dude has got speed and he can catch the football. The offense, it it feels like you know what's funny. The offense has gotten better since Hugh Jackson left. Yeah, I know. Um, no, but the, no the doubt about that. Other part of this is I wonder if the owners in Cincinnati are like frustrated at this or if they're happy about it. like it, they do they love Marvin Lewis or do they hate him. You know, like this. This I don't know, was completely I don't know unexpected this year. Oh no! Yeah, I didn't. I thought Mixon could have a breakout season. I thought Boyd could be in like terms of fantasy, like a, a decent number three receiver, maybe a you know low end number two, maybe have some some boom or bust potential. And AJ Green would kind of take a step back compared to what he's been, but still be in that top echelon of receivers conversation. I, I I just think I think Mixon is is a top five running back right now in the NFL um, with the talent level that he nuts. has. I don't like, know where I would put Boyd in the number of receivers because so many receivers are playing badly because their quarterback play is really bad. Well, I think that the the but system just fits him. He, I mean, I don't I, when you can when you are that fast and can catch. I don't know that there's a system you can't fit in. You're I a mean, receiver. I agreed, but that's like, what you do. You, you just gotta go have fast. A, you catch the football. You got to have a good quarterback. You got to have the right uh, the right play calls. Like the right Dalton, routes. Like the ball kind of looks explosive coming out of his hand. That's yeah, what's shocking to me is it's not just that he's throwing the football and they're scoring more because scoring is up league wide. It's the way the ball looks coming out of his hand. It's the way he looks moving the offense. He just looks like he's got a little hitch in his giddy up. Like he's got yeah. some excitement going. I don't know. All right, we'll move on from that. Next game. The the marquee game of the weekend was supposed to be, and I guess it still was, Packers Rams. But it kind of just felt like it was this big hyped up heavyweight fight that was kind of like, All right, we saw that. What I'm going without the headphones. <laughs> All right. I'm right here. You can hear me. You know what I sound like. I can hear you. What what do you make of A the ending of the game? We're gambling podcast. What do you think of the ending? We'll get to that first and then we'll kinda As a football purist, I thought it was fantastic. I thought Todd Gurley taking the because it's the right play, right? Be, you be careful don't... what you're about to say there. He didn't take a knee. Not take a knee. He didn't slide. He didn't go down. He let them tackle him. Yeah. 
See, this is what every, everyone's trying to give Gurley credit. And you know what? You don't get credit because it's easier for them to rip the ball from your hands and you fumble it than for you to run into the, to the, to the end zone and make them score twice and you not touch the football again. So I'm okay if you want to go down. But don't act like you tried to do the smart thing because you were halfway doing the wrong thing and then a bunch of people yelled and screamed for you to do something different and you you almost got got because they were trying to stand you up and rip the ball from your hand. Yeah. And not that he fumbles a lot, nothing, but that's not the smart play. Now, if you run down there and you do what Maurice Jones Drew did years ago, run to the one and take a knee, we're having a different conversation. But he didn't. He looked like he was a deer in headlights. He was in open field all by his lonesome, and he didn't know what to do. And he was looking to the left, he was looking to the right, and he was trying to figure out what am I supposed to do, and then three guys grab him and start ripping at the football. Yeah. This is right. my problem. We're giving him credit. He's been an unbelievable player. I talked about him being an MVP candidate last week. You don't get credit for being a bonehead when you got away with something. I don't know that he made the right move. I think the coaches caught up to him just in time, and he I got think, lucky. I think he didn't somebody fumble. was yelling, "Go down, go down, go yeah, down!" Some, somebody yelled it, and whoever that was, I'll give them props. But, How about that? But Gurley, and then he takes all the because credit it, at the it, end. Of the it game. was it was the smart play to go down right there. I'm okay with that. Like it's a totally smart play because at that point the Packers can't get the ball. But back. if you're gonna let them tackle you. Now we have a whole yeah, different gotta, problem because if they rip the ball out, you got got. Yeah, no, that's true. Now Aaron Rodgers still has a timeout. No, he doesn't because they loaded the timeout to play before. But you, you still gave Aaron Rodgers the ball, and he and he can do stuff with it. They need a field goal to win. I'm ready to. Uh, we we got one more thing to talk about, right? And All then right, we're going to talk some trades. We'll go some trades because the, the that, last, that one of those trades I want to talk about is okay. Because My, of that. Part of that game was is what does this tell us about the Packers? What have we learned anything about them at all? I mean, they're three, three, and one. No, I mean they played a really good team, the Rams, to kind of a stalemate. Does that does that tell you anything? No. Do we think they're good still? I, mean, no. I think I think they're okay. They're always going to be competitive as long as Aaron Rodgers is. I there. agree, completely agree. But, but they're not a good team. They're not a they're not world beaters. No. Like okay. they, I mean, they, they could beat anybody in the NFL on any given Sunday, but I mean they're they're not they're not gonna go out and dominate. They'll they'll get beat by teams like you know, the Colts could show up and, and beat them. Like that's that's just the way it is. Last thing I was gonna take, number five, the other class of the Titans games was supposed to be the Saints and the Vikings, and it it just wasn't it. It was a very interesting game. Wasn't a bad game, but it just was. Uh, if you had told me that Drew Brees was only going to throw for what, like 120 yards, and the Saints dominate the football game, and the Saints would dominate, like yeah, that would be weird. That, did, to that me. doesn't make sense. So it, what, they didn't even rush for 100, did they? Yeah, they did. They rushed for like 120 total, or 111, something like that. Something like, okay. They broke a hundred yards rushing. Yeah, it, it didn't feel like it. No, but. nothing. Nothing in that game felt exciting, good, great. I think both of those games left me just. Feeling like wanting okay, more, like yeah. I, this is this is disappointing. Yeah, I, I felt I felt the it same was way. a really weird NFL Sunday. If I didn't yeah. talk about your team, sorry, they just sorry. didn't do anything. Exciting. Comment below on the YouTube video and and tell us about it. Yeah, we'll we'll that's, comment back. That's that's my recap. I, a lot of Browns and making fun of Jameis. Let's talk about some of the trades real quick. We got a few minutes here. Let's uh, let's discuss some trades. I'm willing to discuss trades. Redskins. They're buyers. Ha, Clinton Dix from the Packers. I thought that was a great fourth round, fourth pick. round pick. I thought that and was a great skins, pickup. They're building their team on on the defense. Oh yeah, absolutely on defense. And they're five and two, bro. Uh, Are they no, good? They're, they're six and two. Six and two. That's right. They're six, six and two. two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they're good. I think they and it's all defense. The Rams. The, the Rams said, "Hey, we've got a lot of free agents in here. A lot of one and done guys." Let's make this defense even better. Go out and get Dante Fowler. Who was a like, top three pick in the NFL a couple years ago. Why Why did the Rams do uh, – not the Rams. Why, why oh, did the, the Jaguars, Jaguars trade do him? this? I, I wonder if, if they just know they can't pay all these defensive guys. Now, they actually got kind of a, a, a hole in the sense of for a guy they think they're going to lose anyway. 
this year's third and next year's fifth. I mean, not that the fifth per round pick is great. But, I mean, it could be worth something. It's worth something. And, yeah, and it's I mean, better it's... than letting the guy walk at the end of the year. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Ty Montgomery was <laughs> let go after uh, the fiasco that was the end of that's, the Packers That's the game. one that I wanted to talk about. Was... And he was let go for a, a, a sandwich. And it wasn't even a sandwich this year. You got you got to wait till next year, Green Bay, to get your sandwich. And that's they're totally okay with that because they would have cut him one way or another. They're, they're just cutting him. That's they're it. just cutting the, ties with him, letting him go. And he went to the Ravens. About, what did you think about that? Like the fact that it, it, so obviously Mike McCarthy is one of those that's you got to trust your players. You got to do da 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 da, and then he gives an order, like it, yeah. an instruction, very instructive. Do say, not come out. Do not come out. And But Ty, of course, is pissed off because he hadn't been getting playing time. He's been, you know, other guys playing over him. And then he said, screw this. I'm going to go win the game myself. He, his, and then he fumbles the football. His, and then argu gets, his but, argument was worse than all of it. Because uh, the excuse is, what did I try to tell my kids? Not that Ty Montgomery is my child. But, like, it's it's the cover up that's always worse. Like you're trying, you, what your argument for why you did it makes you sound even worse. He said, "I didn't want to catch the ball and kneel it at the one and put the game in the ref's hands." And it was, he said, "I couldn't tell if I was in the end zone or on the one yard line." Dude, you were like three yards deep in the end zone, and they're different wow. colors. This isn't Notre Dame where there's just a white stripe in the middle of it, and yeah. you can't really tell the difference between the end zone and the one yard line. They look alike. No, no, no. This is drastically different. One is like dark navy blue, and the other one is green raw grass. And even then, if you don't know where you are, why don't you just let look, the ball hey, hit? Look, look, you got eyes, right? You can look down. You can. Yeah. And I'm with you. I don't understand the the reason why all these guys catch it. You know the ball is going to go out of the out of out of the end zone. Like it's it's not going to just sit there, and the other team can recover for a touchdown. Yeah. So now, I mean, obviously, we did see something like that in the Steelers. Brown that game. Hence, hence the shot at the Steelers coaching staff for yeah. poorly, poorly coached Ooh. football. Two two receivers I want to talk about. Golden Tate goes to the Eagles for a third round pick. Demarius Thomas goes to the Texans for a uh, fourth round pick in essence. And then there's a seventh round pick swap. The Does, Patriots nor the Titans went after either one of those guys. Well, the Patriots had made it clear they were going to make a move. Well, all reports were. But a lot of reporting on the Patriots have been pretty shoddy over years, so that's kind of neither here nor there. I think Bill does that on purpose. <laughs> here's what I want to ask about this: How bad does this make the Amari Cooper trade look even worse? Golden Tate, by every metric there is to measure, is worlds better of a wide receiver than Amari Cooper. Now he's older than him, but other than age, he's been a lot better than him his entire career. Is is John Gruden friends with Jerry Jones? I, I, no, I, I'm quite certain Jerry probably doesn't have a lot of friends, and I don't think John's friends with anybody but players. And that then it might not even. Be I still players. can't figure out how Jerry got gave a, a first round gave pick. a one to, and this is a guy that's known for being like, I'm the best negotiator in all of Texas. And he's like, go get me a number one receiver. Well, we got Cooper. He's like a number two and a half receiver. Done. <laughs> what do they want for him? They want a one. Give it to him. Like, <laughs> like it ain't even a counter. They ain't be like, like, well, why don't you should have had your cowboy hat on for that? <laughs> that's one. right. That's right. Give it to him. Like, I don't, I don't understand how that negotiation went. I have no idea. Look, I've been jonesing all over uh, Gruden all season, making fun of him, right and left. Listen, Gruden. Least the Cowboys. Oh yeah. When you can get Golden Tate for a third, Demarius Thomas for a, for a for a fourth, I, I I think a first round pick for Amari Cooper is a little asinine. Yeah, it is. What uh what are the other ones we got here? Major Applewhite for a fourth round pick to the Saints. Um, this wait, is who? wait huh? Wait, uh, Eli Eli Apple. Applewhite. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No no, no yeah, white on no. it. Just Eli yeah. Apple. Eli Apple. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, they traded the Houston coach? No, that doesn't what? make any sense at all. The <laughs> coach of the Houston Cougars got traded. Um, and, and this is interesting. The Saints were wanting a big-time guy. Like, they were kind of hoping to get Patrick Peterson in the conversation. The Saints have less than a million dollars in salary cap. Yep. They, like, the idea of going and getting a good guy 
not happening for the Saints just because they can't afford him. Yeah. They are maxed out uh, cap-wise. And then Snacks Harris. This is what's weird, the Lions. The Lions, before they traded <clears throat> Golden Tate, went and got Damon Harris from the Giants. Good defensive lineman. Good defensive rusher and run stopper. <clears throat> it looked like they were going to be buyers. And then they trade Golden Tate. Are they buyers? Are they sellers? I, I can't figure out what the Lions are doing. I don't know what what that what happened. I think, I think Matt Patricia is figuring out who are going to be his guys, and then he's just dealing the rest of them. I feel like Patricia's going to be there for a while. I think he's been told that he will be there for a while. I do, too, but I also don't know that you're letting a first-year coach that's never coached make all your personnel decisions. I think this is a GM decision. This goes over a first-year coach that has no head coaching experience. Yeah, you might be right. I do think right. Snacks would be a, a, a Patricia guy just because he's a defensive guy, and that's what Matt likes. But Golden Tate's been good, and I guess they just made up their mind. We're not re-signing a 30-something-year-old receiver. That's entirely possible. Anyway, that's a recap. That's my uh, conversation on, on the trades.